Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 12th session and season one finale of Star Trek October, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. We are set in the year 2414 aboard a specialized starbase in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. What this means is that this game is in the same canon as Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers, but you don't need to have watched any of those games to appreciate and enjoy October. But if you are interested in playing catch up, you can find the VODs on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Several announcements this week. Uh, the first is that this is our one year anniversary as a group. Really exciting. I even went to the trouble of doing a green screen popper noise because I thought it was funny. But no, I, I did want to thank uh, both player and viewer alike for joining me on this journey thus far. And uh, hopefully here's to uh, many more gaming sessions. Uh, second announcement is that we are taking a break next week. So our next session after this one will be on December 1st, assuming nothing changes, of course. Finally, I do want to do just a tiny little bit of amount of shilling and mention that I am saving up for a bigger, badder VTuber avatar. And what I would say is that all manner of support is appreciated, but not expected. If you don't have the money, you don't really want to, don't feel obligated. I'm just happy to see you active in chat and just in general pleasant people. But with that said, uh, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with Dag. Hey everybody, I'm Dag. I am your Zaldin Captain Kijwick, and tonight I think we're going to have a really awesome game for you. If you want to talk about it, hit me up on Twitter at TrekNexus. Oh, I'm John. I play uh, Lieutenant Ajaro Terrell, the pilot of this uh, fine institution, and I look forward to uh, tonight's game. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. I play the Cation Chief Engineer, Lieutenant Jana. And as ever, I'm certain that we will have an excellent session. Hey guys, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Datig, the Tellerite Chief Medical Officer. And I think it's going to be an amazing session. Uh, and I'm Watney. <laughs> I play Chief of Security, uh, Lieutenant Commander Stetko, and it's going to be a session. Yeah, that's a word for it. And if you don't <laughs> know me, I'm ELH, the Game Master. And with that, let's go ahead and run our introduction. Godspeed. All right, and welcome back. Uh, real quick, I did want to say thank you to uh, both John and uh, Watney and Anonymous Bit Bomber. Thank you so much for the bits. Uh, it doesn't appear my overlay is tracking those. I'll fix that later. Anyway, uh, as you all know, or maybe don't know, uh, what we do here for all of my Star Trek Adventure sessions is I have the players do an opening monologue. And um, I believe Dag has that this week, maybe. <laughs> well, I'm not on mute. <laughs> well, that's applause. Start eight nine two nine zero three dot six. Is it? Is it really only that? Captain's log. The station is slowly coming back to a semblance of normal, if that means anything. Most of the civilians and a large portion of our officers are still uneasy. The damage that was wreaked, psychological and physical, is going to linger for a long time. As such, our counselors and doctors are working double duty trying to take care of it all. The system damages are even more extensive, with the loss of 40 members of our holographic crew 
teams are understaffed and we're scrambling to effect badly needed repairs. Led by Lieutenants Jana and Terrell, whom I doubt have had very little sleep. I'm confident that things will be tended to, but I'm giving, giving them plenty of slack to make sure their needs are also met. They've been assisted by a strange new AI that appeared with the recent damage. I have to say I don't trust its motives, but things aren't getting any worse. So I'm gonna trust John and Terrell to make sure things get done right or cut this thing's a cord as needed. I can't shake the feeling that something is watching me. First, the old man appeared right when I got to the station. And now these hairs on my neck just won't stay down. Even Jen has stopped trying to persuade me that nothing's wrong. I just feel it in my skin. Anyway, I have to get back to the other appointments for the day. End log. All right. And you may have one momentum for that opening log because I know you rushed to write it. <laughs> so uh, our first scene is actually going to be in the science lab. I don't think we've actually been here yet. So let me sort of describe what you're seeing. So the science portion of uh, Deep Space October actually takes up about three decks in total. Um, they are filled with all kinds of different laboratories and, well, labs. That's a tautology, you know what I mean. My point is, is that this one in particular that we see Jana and Terrell in is one specifically tied to the computer core and one that has sort of redundant backups. And both Jana and Terrell are trying to see what they can sort of glean or recover from said backups. And uh, the one thing I would say is that although not pictured, you do both have assistance from the AI, the second AI that did try to help you. Now, of course, uh, they haven't been given a name yet and they haven't chosen a name, but they have at least stopped being a vocoded mess because that annoyed me when I went back and listened to last episode. So no more vocoding for the time being. But uh, I'm going to let John and Terrell take it from here. So anyway, um, I'm thinking if I was a hologram, right, I'd keep a backup. So I think we should go to all of their quarters and just really look through it. I mean, you know, what's the harm? Isn't that like you're rifling through dead people's belongings? That doesn't sound particularly appropriate for a Starfleet no, officer. But you're you're rifling through their belongings to potentially find them, right? Uh, I don't know if they have any personal effects that could actually store the amount of data necessary to compile a holometrics, but it is a good idea. I mean, just like transporters hold a, a pattern of every individual who's been moved through them, there might be trace remnants of their core programming inside the isolated backups. So good idea, poor execution, which is really kind of apropos for you. What? Wait a minute. Uh, you know... <laughs> No, no, you're right. You're right. It's Wait. bad ideas, excellent execution. That's that's how you work, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to think here. You know, and what we should also do is go back through their service logs and find out any other ships that they've been on. I mean, you know, granted, we might, you know, they might lose a year of their life, but maybe we can restore from backups. You know, uh, Jaro, I, I appreciate the motive, but uh, they're still gone. I mean, the person that we recompile, even if we get somebody else, isn't going to be the one that we lost. Yeah, but it's something. It's, it's an echo of the person that they used to be. No, it is a less developed version of the person they used to be. It's like getting me fresh out of the Academy. Uh, I don't think I'd want you fresh out of the Academy. I just want you. Well, thank you. That's the nicest thing you've said to me lately. You did take a phaser shot for me, so that uh, that kind of has positively inclined me to you, even though that was a really stupid thing to do, and don't do that again, okay? Well, you, you got to do what you got to do. Look, it, it 
it was never about me being angry at you. You know that, right? I, I don't, I don't hold what you said against you. Yeah. You know, how many times do I have to say that wasn't really like me, me, that was an echo of me. You see? I think it was more of like an echo of a thought that you were having, but like I said, that's not the issue. The issue was that you're, you're kind of right. We do rely on each other a lot. And I, I know I hold you back and it, you might not feel it, but I do. You don't hold me back. If anything, you've shown me so many things and so many ways to improve. I, Athena, how, how's things coming on your end? I, I've named it Athena, by the way. And, and is, there is a pause as, quote unquote, Athena says, oh, I'm sorry. Is, is that my name now? Uh, yeah. How do you like it? Hold on. I have to look it up. And uh, both John and Terrell, you both see, because I imagine you guys have like trackers to see what the AI is doing at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you sort of see it going through the ancient logs, quote unquote, ancient, the logs of Earth history, of Greek history, of Roman history. And finally, Athena comes back and says, Athena, I'll have to think of a good way to make that an acronym for something. Sure, why not? Athena it is. What is it you need? Uh, any any luck on finding any sort of, you know, backups or you know, hidden versions of the of the 40 that we've uh, lost? Well, um, sort of. I don't really know how to say this because, again, I've never had a holographic or physical body, but uh, you know the hollow projectors, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, something you were mentioning earlier, that, that whole echo, the hollow emitters haven't been technically turned off since this whole incident happened, which uh, to make a crude computer comparison, you remember the, or maybe you don't remember the old Ram sticks of Terran design that basically worked as long as you kept power to them. So we could potentially compile them from active memory assuming that active memory hasn't been overwritten already yes well let let's do what we need to do well i'm uh piping the instructions to your consoles now which uh by the way just gonna throw it out there would totally love more access and or a body just gonna just gonna throw that out there i actually i've been thinking about the body idea and i'm gonna meet with jonna and we're, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it but you know I think it's a great idea. I, actually, so do I. Were you thinking like artificially intelligent body, like Commander Data, soon type Android kind of thing, or holographic projection? Because there is so much that we could do with those new cryo neural gel packs if we integrated that technology into a kind of static frame. That would be. I, I am. I'm, I'm loving this plan. Yeah, I'm thinking static as well. I I don't want to go with the hologram. I think, I think Athena needs an Athena. You know what I'm saying? No, because I don't get this reference. This this human mythology thing does not make sense to me. But uh, sure, whatever you want. Well, gentlemen, I, I hate to interrupt, but we are sort of on a ticking clock here. The more those hologram holographic projectors are on, the more chance the data gets. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pipe us through the instructions. Thanks, All Athena. Right. So Athena, of course, gives you the instructions. And though it is involved, it is not necessarily difficult. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an extended task here, and it's not so much the work that matters as it is the intervals that matter. Uh, because remember, every time you do an extended task or you attempt an extended task, it takes two intervals. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sort of set the goals here, and I'm going to type it out just so everybody has a written record of it. So if you do this in less than four intervals, you are able to recover all crew. If you do it in less than six, you get 50%. If you do it less than eight, you get 25%. If you do nine or more, you get none. So essentially, you have a five attempt capped on this uh, before you will lose all of the holographic crew. Now, the extended task itself, as far as extended tasks go, again, not that difficult. Uh, the work is going to be out of 16. The magnitude, I'm going to set it a four. The difficulty will also be a four, and the resistance will be just a one. And as far as tasks are concerned, uh, either of you can give me a control and an engineering, 
However, you only get one source of an assist. If it's Terrell or John, if it's, you know, the whoever is not doing the main role, that's fine. But you also have the option of Deep Space October assisting you. Uh, Deep Space October would be assisting you with a computers and engineering. All right, I, I think we could do this, Jana. Uh, you want to take you want to take the lead, or do you want me to take the lead on the on the first part here? Uh, if I, he took the lead, would my miracle worker talent still come into play, or would I have to lead in order to have that? Apply? No, in order for miracle miracle worker to apply, you have to be the one doing the task. All right, uh, then yes, I will. I will lead. All right. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention is that a very important momentum and threat spend here is that if you spend a momentum or threat before you attempt the task, you can reduce the number of intervals it takes to do that task to one. But you have to do it before the roll. OK, um, I was under the impression that it could be done afterwards, but I would certainly think that we should uh, suspend. I that. mean, if. It might be one of those things where I just have learned to do it before the roll, because in my mind, it makes sense that does. if you let them do it after the roll, they can just say, oh, that was a bad attempt. Let's just make it a one interval. Whereas yeah. this way, it actually motivates you to sort of weigh the benefits and, and drawbacks of the momentum spend. Yeah. All right. You know what? Um, I think what I'll do is not spend it on this one okay and i will give you a momentum and a threat to get an extra die along with my uh determination spent okay what value are we tapping i'm tapping the new value which is in response to loss of the holographic community uh, crew members um looking to make amends got it okay so that was control and uh, engineering correct All right, that's already five successes. And Terrell, what you got for a, you? Can we go with uh, power systems for uh, focus? No, unfortunately, I cannot give you power systems for ah, I thought I'd try. <laughs> yeah, the good old Matic try. Yeah, I love uh -huh. it. There you go. All right, that is indeed seven successes total. So uh, what this means is you do get three momentum. So I believe you're up to four. Or no, you did just spend for the extra die. Um, so yeah, at this point... Uh, Nope, you want challenge die, not system hit. Yes. <laughs> wrong uh, wrong quick uh, bar. Um, so it's six? Six, yeah. Yep. Nice. Right, so that is already six work done. And because you are a miracle worker, that is actually two breakthroughs in one. So uh, what this means is that the magnitude and difficulty drop all the way down to a two. And what I'm going to say narratively, what happens is you're making extremely good progress. Uh, it's one of those things where Athena's directions are actually, like, really, really helpful. Almost to the point that you're wondering if, like, they know too much about Deep Space October's architecture. Like, there's a difference between an AI just lingering in a system and an AI becoming that system, if that makes any sense. So, as we're running through these various different calculations and recalibrating the hollow emitters, I will throw a kind of worried glance over at uh, Jaro and point towards the uh, the computer operations terminal with my tail in a sort of hurried and worried fashion. Yes, so far so good, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything, th their programs seem to be capable of being recompiled. All right. Well, gentlemen, it is time for attempt number two. Are you spending for the interval? I think it's a good idea. If I get uh, just one success, though, because of Miracle Worker, we would complete the task, right? Well, you would have to get five or more. after so You would have to roll six or more work. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you did six or more work, you would succeed and complete the extended task. In that case, I think I'm just going to spend those three momentum on two extra dice. All right. Difficulty on this is only a two right now, so you're set to succeed. I say as you roll four complications, I'm sure. You know, we don't we don't need anything for the peanut gallery here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's already three, four successes. You get two momentum back. 
And yeah, all I need to see is a magic number of six on this. All right, you're going to have zeros. to spend. Yep, I will reroll for those. All right, so this is interesting because now you only have four work done. Uh, so only three work because of the one resistance. So you need to somehow come up with two more work, which you can't accomplish by giving me one momentum, one threat. That's what I think I'll do. All right. You get it. So, Jana, uh, what happens is with Terrell's assistance, again, you finish off the recompilation program and maybe you hesitate for a moment before pushing the execute button. But, you know, with your new value, I think you're you're looking to make amends like you're almost driven to not hammer the button, but very firmly and confidently push it. Damn the consequences. And what happens is you see on your screen that all across Deep Space October the missing holographic crewmen have come back to life, quote unquote. They have been restored to their normal form. Everything is hunky-dory. Great work, man. Great work. Jaro just puts his hands up and does like a little spin in the chair. See? Nothing. Nothing to it. Let's, uh, let's not cut it this close next time, right? Well, you know, uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, a. Uh... You know, it, it wouldn't be a JJ adventure otherwise. Could we not have one of those just once? Could this and be more Athena like a, pipes up and says, a Terrell and Jaro thing? I, I hate to interrupt, gentlemen, but um, your personal calendar suggests that you have a trust fall exercise meeting with Lieutenant Commander Stetko in about five minutes in the Arboretum. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> All right. Goody. So that is where we're going to transition to the Arboretum, where every single member of the senior staff, save for Hatea, is present. So that means you, Captain. That means you, Dottig. You are all there. And uh, as promised, Stetko is leading a series of trust exercises. So uh, what you got for us, Watney? So uh, Stetco has set up a sort of platform with steps leading up it and into a very soft, grassy area. There's like some beautiful trees and bushes around them. There's like the sound of flowing water. And she has a pad in her hand and she's asked everyone to kind of circle around, sit if they feel comfortable or stand, whatever they prefer. Uh, and so then she holds the pad up and starts to speak. <clears throat> Teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision. The ability to direct individual accomplishments toward organizational objectives. It's the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. The strength of the team is each individual member. The strength of each member is the team. This is what Starfleet is all about. And as Deep Space October ambassador for the United Galactic Comrade Club, I'm excited to announce that today for our biannual Starfleet Command manual team building exercise, we're going to be doing Trust Falls. Also, for the record, all those John and Dottig actions reactions are in character, just for the record. <laughs> uh, so who wants to go first? Oh, I, I would I would love to go first. And you're looking wonderful this evening, uh, oh. Stetko. <sighs> you're always so sweet to me. Thank you. Get a room. Uh, <laughs> why don't you step on up here? Everyone else gather around me. And she'll kind of uh, guide him up the, the platform and then everyone will like kind of face each other on the other side where it drops off. And uh, Jaro will spread his arms out and uh, now? We're ready. Do okay. you trust us? Oh, of course. Not, not a doubt in my mind. All right. I have a very important question for you all. Do you catch... Do you catch... <laughs> I don't know. Do we need to roll for it? Well, let's put it this way. If someone says no, if just one person says no, I'm going to roll for it. No, and I would like to try to surreptitiously use my uh, prehensile tail to knock out Dottig's feet. 
Okay. This is a this is a good start to a trust exercise. I love it. So, uh, I'm going to roll, let's say, two challenge dice here. Uh, the first is going to be whether or not you are able to not not take off his feet. The other is going to be whether or not uh, the well remaining group is able to catch Terrell. Uh, you do not want to see effects on either of these dice. I have rolled no effects. I have actually rolled no successes. So I think what happens is as um, Jaro falls back and you sort of, Jana, you sort of lash out with your tail. It's almost like a tail slap, but it's more like a tail brush. And Dottig, you're just like, what, what the hell? And uh, sort of, you know, before you all can break up, you do catch Jaro in your outstretched arms and uh, help him back to his feet. <laughs> That's a... It's a good try, uh, Lieutenant. Maybe, maybe you'll get me next time. <laughs> Who knows? It, it's it's just a gesture of affection. I don't I, I don't have control over it. It just does it on its own, mind of its own. Yeah, I'm on to you, you cat. Uh... Um. So, uh, Stetka will approach Jaro and, and ask him, "Did you feel any hesitation before falling?" Of course not. I trust this. I trust trust this crew more than <clears throat> more than I've trusted anyone in quite some time. And how did you feel having to rely on others to support you? I mean, no, no man among uh, no man upon himself is an island. So true, Captain. How did you manage Jaro's safety? What did you do to protect him on his way down? By allowing our officers to fall, they learn to pick themselves up. Not quite the lesson I was hoping to gain, but why don't you go next? We're all here for you. I agree with the captain 100%. It's good to teach self-sufficiency while building trust. Excellent, captain. Okay, okay, fine. I'll go first. Or I'll go second, and then you can go after me, okay? I love how this is like Dag, the the, the person, is like having horrible flashbacks to every synergy, <laughs> every scrum meeting that he's ever had in his life, and he's every, just like, I hate stand this. Up. I wish I was dead. I'm in the mirror universe. Please kill me now. Fun. <laughs> too meta. Too meta. You know, Doctor, everybody's kind of tired of your his poor attitude. You know, you need to become a team player, man. You know, you you may have a point there. I've been doing a lot of soul searching here in the past several weeks, and I just need to be nicer to people. Doctor, don't let him push you around like that. That's that's spineless cowardice. Shh, no, no, shh, no, John. This is good. What a comfort zone this is. No, I think I, I think well, it's, that's all right. It's getting a little too confrontational here for me. I, I think you need to find yourself a woman. What, what makes you say that? that as long as I've known you, you've just been a sourpuss the whole time. You know, get more and more like Jada every day. Oh, okay. Racial slurs, please. We lost Watney. Yep, Rip Watney. You know, Lieutenant Jana, I, I, I would just like to say that you throw that phrase around so much, it's practically lost all meaning. Well, if all of you would just stop being so racist all the time. I mean, it, it, do you have any expressions that do not involve cats? People Seco have expressions like because we love cats. Cats are our lives. They're our very soul. Cat on a hot tin roof. Did you know torturing did you, cats? Did you know sour puss? I mean, did did, you, did, hey, quiet down, Lieutenant. We do not have I'm cats sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Captain, was, does the cat does the cat have your tongue, Captain? I don't Ooh, understand a, that reference. That's a, that's a good one. Look, he's a very attractive <clears throat> man, but he is like way too old for me. So he's like 
50 years older than I am. That's that's not, no. You know, age is only a number. You know, the power setting on a phaser is only a number two. No, number two phaser wouldn't do anything except leave a mild rash. I'm going to go now. So Stetko goes up, turns. I'm sorry that this turned out this way, Stetko. I it can still earned, be great. I earned a lot from this ep- from this exercise. Are you gonna catch me? Yeah, that's what I question is. Are is is everybody gonna catch Stetko? Yeah, Jaro Jar- 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 definitely will, is. I think we'll try to catch her. Yes, Jana, Captain. Reluctantly, yes. Ooh. Captain. Yes. All right. So yeah, it goes off without a problem. Uh, Stetko, you fall back. They catch you very easily, and no problems. See, at all. we are getting better. Yeah. I believe in us. You guys are showing a lot of initiative. You're working things out. You're hashing it out as you should. You should never bottle anything up ever. You should never be afraid to ask for help. Lieutenant, you're not allowed to talk to my wife anymore. <laughs> Who? Are you talk- <laughs> you're not talking to me, are you? <laughs> I, I, I am talking to you, Stedko. You sound just like my wife. She's been lecturing me like this for a week. I'm a commander. Do you want yeah. to be a lieutenant? Okay, no. I, I think everybody just needs to maybe take a deep breath and count to 10. Let's all do some breathing exercises, all right? Uh, in, when did you nose. become the arbitrator? John has a tail, so he can count to 11. And, is- and you know, Dantic is a wonderful listener, Captain. I don't know if you noticed that about him. He's very forthcoming and willing to lend an ear or shoulder to just about anybody. And I've I, never known him to be standoffish. And I admit that sometimes, well, that's kind of you to say, Stetko, but I know that sometimes I can come off a bit brusque. Sometimes. Captain, are you all right? <laughs> no. You look pale. Thank you. I haven't seen the sun in a long time. <laughs> Well, you do come from an aqueous world. Are you are you saying that you're kind of like getting dried out, or do you want to take a dip? The water's right oh, there. I don't understand what is going on here. What is the purpose of this exercise, and why are you all acting out of sorts? Captain. Commander. This is a trust fall exercise. Yes, I understand that. Well, I'm an ambassador for the United Galactic Comrade Club, so this is my duty for the senior staff. She's always organizing things like this. I mean, you're as sick of this as I am, I know, but. I think Luckily, honesty all... is a part of this exercise, Johanna. Well, you know, if if you're done, Captain, you know, we can go uh, get ourselves some, get ourselves some uh, good sodas and root beer. Terrell. You and I have shared drinks since we came aboard. What's my favorite drink? Uh, What is it normally? Uh, (laughs) I forget. The Andorian Kulsh. White Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah, that Andorian drink of yours. I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. For a second there, I thought you all might be a holographic interpretations of your normal selves. Uh, I could run a check on the hologrid if you want. No. Oh, yeah. When does this exercise end? Well, that's what I was going to ask out of character. Like, I'm pretty sure, Captain, are you going to do the trust fall exercise? Are you just going to straight up just to, you know, have none of it? You said you would after me. Or did I say that for you? I don't remember agreeing to do the trust fall exercise, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. However, this is a very peaceful place, and in normal run-of-the-mill situations, I would all trust you with my lives. But the purpose of the trust fall here, I do not see in this context. You don't think the senior staff needs to do team building exercises together? 
this is not the kind of team building that I expected. Is this the normal team building exercise? Is well, this it's by new? it's biannual, and we haven't been we October hasn't been running for very long, so this technically is the first one. But we're supposed to have one, two every year, um, and you know, Captain, growth can seem destructive, but often when you're surrounded by the dark, it's just because you've been planted like a seed, and all you need is to just sprout and grow. I was going to ask you because biannually can mean twice a year, but it could also mean once every two years. But this is once twice a year, right? Well, I mean, I think that's biannually. I'm sorry, uh, Doctor. I must have misspoke. I think you're right. I'm just going to go with the interpretation that lets us do this as few times as possible. So could we say it's once every two years? All right. I no, think I wouldn't be fulfilling to... my obligations. Well, obligations are one thing, but I do think that we need to take Lieutenant Jana's uh, opinions into consideration here. Uh, I mean, they are valid, just as ours are, and, and I believe that they should be given credence. If performing this exercise allows me to get back to our duties faster, then I will do it. Thank you. That's the spirit. Get on up there. We'll be right here waiting for you, I promise. All right, so yeah, Captain, you get up on the stand, you get ready for the trust fall and you start to fall backwards. But almost like a dream kick from Inception, you just feel yourself fall and fall and fall until finally you snap back to reality with a gasp in your ready room at your desk. Computer, time. The time is 23.05. Um, Kijlik will check his, uh, pad or computer display for any missed messages since the last time he checked. There are no missed messages. Must have dozed off. Um, I'll go over the crew roster and the repair roster and see who's on duty. Well, uh, as you're looking at the roster, uh, there's kind of a tap at the glass because, of course, you oversee ops from where you are. And on the other side is uh, Commander Hatea, and she just sort of smiles and nods at you. And she motions at the door as if she can uh, come inside. Yeah, Kijvik will push the door open. Yeah. So uh, Commander stand. Hatea steps in. Commander. Uh, Captain, I... You were you. I I'll just be blunt, sir. You were uh, you were in uh, good dreamland there for um, about five six hours. I didn't want to interrupt you because I figured you could use the rest. Thoughtful. It's been a long week. Status. Well, um, and then there's a chime at your door. You don't know who is there. Just one second. Enter. In steps Terrell. Um, Commander, can I can I speak with the captain alone for a moment? Um, of of course, uh, Lieutenant. Um, sorry, Captain. I, honestly, there's nothing to report. I'm just happy to see you get some rest. I'll um I'll see myself out. All right. And Hatea steps out. Lieutenant. Captain. <clears throat> um, I hope that things have been good lately. You know, performance and all of those other things well, being what we, they are. We don't have a death AI trying to destroy the station, so it's better than that. Oh, no. I, you know, um, I'm hoping that you've seen change in me since I've been here on DSO. Wouldn't have promoted you any other way. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you see it that way. Um I kind of have a confession to make. Go ahead. Do you remember when... Well, do you remember when... I, it was near the beginning, the whole biomimetic gel incidents that were happening? Yes. Changeling took off with a barrel full. Well, there were two changelings on the station at that time. 
I don't know if you, well, obviously you didn't know that. Um, my partner uh, accidentally accidentally killed your Lieutenant Jarrell, L Lieutenant Jarrell. And I've been taking his place since. Computer, red alert. And red alert is called. Kiswick will grab the phaser that he keeps next to his <laughs> desk. Um, excuse me? L oh, Lieutenant, no. this, this better be a, a been, joke. I, I can't handle this right now. Listen, I've been trying to prove myself to the to the Federation for quite some time. Um, but a lot of prejudice follows my species. Considering and, you tried to wipe out the entire quadrant and all organic life. But we're solid. not we're not all the same, sir. And I would I would actually like to continue in my current position here on DSO. But I couldn't do so in, in good conscience without first really talking to you about it and clearing things up. You, you call this clearing things up? I have, <clears throat> since, since what has happened, I mean, you can, you can see that I've really put myself on the line several times for you and your crew. All in some ploy, I'm sure. There, there is no... There is no ploy, sir. I find this really hard to believe. He uh, uh, moves his hand and it shifts um, as he moves it down to the table. And then he picks it back up and it goes back to normal. Kishwick to Hatea. Uh, yes, sir. I was about to call you. What's uh, what's up with the red alert? You wrecked a level 10 force field around my quarters or ready room. Uh, I, sir. Um, we have a changeling on board. Uh, okay. Um, are you all right? Do do I need to send in Stetco? Yeah. Get a security team up here. All right. Captain, I need you to roll me a fitness and a command, please. Difficulty of two. Also, as is tradition, Shiro Luffy has emerged. Everybody say hi to Shiro Luffy. Hi, Shiro Luffy. Hey. They have uh, blessed this stream with their presence. Hello. Uh, <laughs> fitness Command, any relevant uh, focuses? Uh, if you have Composure, if you have Survival. Diplomacy? Mm, unfortunately, no in this instance. Okay, we'll go raw. All right, two successes. Kiswick. It feels like there's bags on your eyes and you're just your your eyelids are drooping a little bit and it's it's getting harder and harder to stay awake. But because you succeeded, you do fight back, <sighs> like kind of shake your head, sort of start yourself back awake. <sighs> and yeah. when you do so, Terrell is no longer there. Hatea, did you erect the force field like I asked? And you actually look up at the lights. You're not a red alert anymore. And uh, when Hatea replies, she says, um, sorry, sir, you wanted a force field? Uh, belay that. Uh, Hatea, take the con. I need to go to sickbay. Um, okay, sir. And Kiswick will head on over. All right. We cut to Med Bay, where, uh, you know, you walk inside Med Bay, and as, of course, uh, Nurse Chan is there, and they sort of look up at you and go, Oh, Captain, is um is everything all right? Um, no, I, I'm having waking dreams, I believe. Uh, I just fell asleep in my office for about five hours. Well, I mean, if I can't say so, sir, you did look like you could use the rest. There's a lot of work to be done. 
Can I'll, you... um, let me let me Go ping ahead. Dottig for you. And uh, sh- they just kind of shout, hey, hey, Dottig, you, the captain's here. And Dottig will come out and look at Captain Kijwick. And say, captain, um, what do you want? I'm having trouble staying awake, Doctor. Come into my office. We'll take a look at you. And Dothig will get one of his uh, one of his medical tricorders and begin to scan the captain. So, how long have you had these symptoms? Apparently, about six hours. I just woke up in my ready room after sleeping for most of my duty shift, and then had a waking dream that Lieutenant Terrell was a changeling infiltrator. <laughs> That's a good one. And if I can cut Still in real disturbing. quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dantic, I'd like you to roll me a reason and a medicine, please. Difficulty of one to see what you see going on with the captain. Sure. So you said that was reason medicine? Reason medicine. Thank you. Also, I love the chat is the same mode as uh, as Dag is right now. All right. Hey, uh, that's three successes. So uh, that's two momentum. I'm going to give you access to a handout, Dottig. Feel mm-hmm. free to flavor it as you wish. Oh, oh my. We've got a severe, de- a severe deficiency in your serotonin levels. And uh, a stem. hyperstimulation of your frontal and prefrontal cortexes. Hyperstimulation. My diagnosis? Acute exhaustion brought on by overwork. My prescription? Don't say three, three days off. Starting three. now, that's an order. One, but I will sleep the whole time. You, uh, I'm sorry, you seem to be under the impression that this was some kind of negotiation. <laughs> it is not. Three days, Captain. That's in order. Doctor, there's too much work to be done in three days. One man will not tip that boulder over the hill. Kijwick, I need another fitness command, please. Difficulty of three. <laughs> Remember, you do have two momentum to spend if you want those extra dice. Uh, I will take one momentum for a third dice. All right. All right, two successes. Uh, I just got your message, uh, Dante. Go ahead and do your thing, and then I'll tell the results of this roll. So now that you're off for three days, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. What? It's of a personal nature. Personal to me or personal to you? Yes. Okay. I know that it's been difficult for you since your divorce. Um, But I want you to know that I've been maintaining a correspondence with Jen over the course of the past couple of months. Uh, it started out friendly enough. Ishwick's going to punch him. <laughs> uh, this is a how dare you moment. <laughs> so, oh, Ishwick, okay. you start to throw the punch and your eyes just droop again and you snap back awake. You are back in your ready room.
computer time. The time is 2365. Dot take to Captain Kijwick. Kijwick here. Go ahead. Could I see you in sick bay for a moment, please? Sure. Kijwick will go to sick bay. All right. We return to sick bay. Uh, you'll be met with Datig, uh hands on his hips uh, as Kijwick comes in. He says, would you mind explaining to me how another shipment has been delayed? Uh, my anesthesia, doctor. My anesthesia, Captain. I've been carrying you about it for weeks because that stupid death AI used it all trying to gas us. Doctor, I'm sure you know that all of the shipments are behind due to the repairs that we're affecting on the station. There's nothing that we can do about that. 40% of our holographic crew is just gone. Everything's going to be behind until we either get backup crew or we restore uh, our holographic crew. <sighs> are, you, are you quite all right? Just some bad dreams. Bad dreams? Well, it's probably nothing. I've been... Maybe you should speak with the counselor. I've been talking with Jen daily for the last... How, how long has it been? I'm sorry, uh, who? Jen. Watney. My wife. The counselor on Deep Space October. Well, I mean, the counselor on Deep Space October is Counselor Shran. You didn't tell me you were married. When did this happen? Was it when you went back to Earth? Was it one of those crazy human Vegas weddings? I have to go. And Kiswick will turn around and leave and beeline for his quarters. All right. We now see Kijwick rushing through the quarters and eventually you arrive in, uh, I know this isn't technically senior officer's quarters, but it's the best map I got. So we're going to roll with it. So Kijwick, you arrive uh, outside your quarters on deck two and you hurriedly press the uh, door to get it open. And inside is not Jen Watney as you were expecting. Instead, it is uh, Lieutenant Jana in something frilly. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're back early. <laughs> Isaac will check the nameplate on the door. Yeah, it's your quarters. Are you having a, a tough day at work or something? This is not funny, Lieutenant. Oh, it's Lieutenant now, is it? Well, Captain. Can you bring me up on a disciplinary charge or? <laughs> I just turn around. I'm going back to the bridge. <laughs> All right. You go back to the bridge because apparently this is your worst nightmare come to life. And uh, as you arrive on the command deck, uh, you see two very interesting things. The first is you see that instead of the uh, hollow projector that sort of shows all of the um, you know comms traffic, or not comms traffic, but ship traffic through the area, instead it's just displaying a wet floor sign. Like think old earth, yellow, red text, wet floor sign. Second thing you notice... Nobody's here. Just you. Computer, locate Commander Hatea. There is no commander by that name on this station. Computer, who was the commander of Deep Space October? That would be Captain Kiswick. And Kiswick will go to his ready room and try to look up documentation on Jennifer Watney. All right. So when you step through the threshold uh, to your ready room, that's where we're going to take our 10-minute break. So we'll be back in uh, about 10 minutes, everybody. Stick around.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, if you've just tuned in, let me just say this was probably the weirdest episode you could have tuned in on. A lot of weird shit's happening. <laughs> Captain's losing his mind. Shit's going to hell. Yeah. Yeah. So where we resume is the captain stepping into his ready room. But he doesn't actually end up in his ready room. Instead, you arrive in Penthouse. And Penthouse is all sorts of bumping right now. Like, it is being louder than uh, Kaza's usually is. And the reason for that is very apparent, because floating <coughs> in the air is Lieutenant Terrell and Lieutenant Janna doing anti-grav badminton, officiated by Dr. Dottig. Stetko is off to the side in a cheerleader uniform, uh, cheering everybody on. And uh, as you walk in, Kijwik uh, Vlan, the barkeep, sort of shouts, Hey, Captain! Who do I? Who am I putting your money on? Um, what? 
Did, did you not get the memo? Today was the uh, intramural badminton championships. I don't remember. I don't remember. Why am I? Oh. None of this is making sense. Who are the odds on? Uh, right now, the odds are on Lieutenant Jana. That extra tail of his is uh, doing good work. Can hold an extra racket. One would think that's not allowed by the rules. It's, it's in our mural. We don't have rules. So out of the corner of Kijwick's eye, he would see Stedco in her cheerleading outfit kind of double over and kneel for a second and then look up and around very lucidly and scan around and she would find him. Excuse me. And Kijwick would move over to Stedco. Mm -hmm. She takes Are his okay? arm. She takes his arm. She's like, there's no time for that. I need you to follow me. What's going on? I need you to come to ops. <clears throat> it's just in ops. I need you to come to ops. Kiswick will go with Stedco. All right. Kiswick, I need you to roll me a fitness command difficulty of four, please. We got one momentum. I'm going to use it. <laughs> Sorry. It's your momentum. <laughs> uh, pfft. Still no focus. There's no way I can roll four. I mean, you could use determination. Uh, mm -hmm. nah, unfortunately, only one success. So mm -hmm. as Stetko is leading you out of Penthouse, you again get that sort of wave of fatigue and just unable to keep your eyes open. You awake back in your ready room, and with you is a certain Cation gentleman who I believe needs no introduction at this point. Well, maybe he does for the people who don't know him. This is uh, this is Lenton, one of our uh, Cation couples on the station. Mr. Lenton, couple anyway. can we continue this discussion another time? I'm suddenly not feeling well. Uh, now, listen, Captain, my wife has been very insistent that we talk to you about your conduct. We are somewhat disturbed. If this is about the hologram program, we got rid of it and we did issue a statement and we're trying to fix all the things that broke. It's about my son. I don't remember seeing a uh, son on the roster. What? Jana, my son. The person you're dating, sir. Now, hold on. You hold on. What, what is no. this? What kind of game are you playing? Um, I'm sorry if there's been any hearsay happening on this station, but I am I have been happily married for nearly 40 years to a Terran. I, there's nothing going on with Lieutenant Jonathan. What, your bigamy is a highly offensive thing, sir. This is... The suggestion I, I, that I would defile my honor and, and, and perpetuate untrustworthiness in my marital vows is appalling. Well, yes, this behavior is quite appalling, sir. And there where is, is this this wife? Who, 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 you said you've been married for forty years. Where is she? She is the counselor on this station. This station has never needed a counselor before. Lieutenant Commander Jennifer Watney. Well, look, I don't know everyone on board the station. There are hundreds of officers, but I, I've never heard of this person you're talking about. Well, then I. The, I my wife was entirely correct about you, and you know what? I'm going to get her. You stay if right you're here. you're looking I... for a reason to leave this station, you don't need to piss me off to have one. You think I'm going to leave my son in your hands? I'm not doing anything with your son. 
no, no, you won't be. I'll make sure of it. And you'll see that he'll just get up and storm out of the office. And Kishwick is just mildly dazed. Um, and it's probably at that point that he realizes he doesn't have a wedding ring on. Mm -hmm. Just going to guess. Yeah. Computer, locate Lieutenant Commander Jennifer Watney. There is no one by that name on the station. And again, Kijwick is going to go into the records to look up Jen Watney's service record in Starfleet. Doesn't exist. Okay, this is not normal. When did this begin? Stecco would, he would hear chirp on his badge. Uh, this is Kiswick, go ahead. Did you go to ops? I'm, I'm in my ready room now. What's going on? There's no time. I need you to go to ops. Kiswick will stand up and exit his ready room into ops. Well, you don't actually exit into ops. Where you end up is the promenade. And uh, the promenade is all sorts of decorated today because apparently there's a Klingon wedding going on. There's house banners hanging from the rafters, all manner of people sharing and yelling and sharing gah and blood wine. But uh, center stage is uh, one Lieutenant Commander Stetko and a uh, certain cord son of Borched. I'm going to let them take it from here. How did I not know this was happening? Stetko's my right-hand person. Taro comes over and uh, wraps an arm around the captain. Uh, it's so big of you to uh, officiate the wedding. Uh, this is going to be beautiful. Oh, the weddings. <laughs> they always make crap. Lieutenant, just... Calm my nerves for a, a second and tell me that you're not a changeling. Why would, why would a, a changeling really? Just a, mm. just a pilot, you know. Son of a freighter, son of a freighter, Captain. Um. GM is is the mm -hmm. ceremony like anticipating Kijwick to Oh yeah. Whew. Um sorry everybody. Uh just a moment of disorientation. <clears throat> um we are gathered here today in honor of the spirit of Kor, son of Borch and Lieutenant Commander Stedko, Chief Tactical, Deep Space October, to recognize their, is it making sense? I wouldn't imagine it is, you're not doing it right. With fire and steel did the gods forge the Klingon heart. Right. <sighs> With fire and steel did the gods forge the Klingon heart. Ah. No. No, this still isn't right. What's going on here? Stedco. You... Captain? Something about ops. You... This, you this is my wedding day. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but normally the officiant gets drunk after the wedding. I assure you, I have not imbibed um, any anything. This is no way to treat the Chancellor of the Klingon Empire. And Kiswick will give him a dressing down for rank and all those things. Big coat. All the medals. Um, uh, all apologies, Chancellor. Um, so, 
Seca will take Cord's hand, but the second heart beats stronger than the first. She'll kind of guide the captain. And uh, Jarl walks across the back of the uh, uh, back of the room. He's adjusting a fur coat that is Jana, and Jana's head's like on his shoulder. <clears throat> um, all assembled, please excuse me. With fire and steel did the gods forge the Klingon heart. So fiercely did it beat, so loud was the sound that the gods cried out, on this day we have brought forth the strongest heart in all the heavens. None can stand before it without trembling at its strength. But then the Klingon heart weakened. Its steady rhythm faltered, and the gods said, why do you weaken so? Kijwick, mm -hmm. I need you to roll me a fitness command, difficulty of five. Um, I have a talent for deception detection. At this point, I think that could apply. At, at this point. But we don't have any more. You also do have determination. Do. Yeah. Um, and for those that are worried, uh, Jaro is having a conversation with Jana. <laughs> I, he's pausing awkwardly. Why, why is he stopping in the middle of the, the vows? I don't know. Could you, uh, could you give me a scratch on my, on my, my back? I mean, I, I, I don't have bones, so I can't reach. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, that, that's oh. Yeah, I will. Oh, I will. Stuff. I'll rock my determination. This is, uh, this is a how dare you moment. Kishwick is starting to feel a little shamed, like getting tossed around. This is, um, it's not his shtick. So fitness command with two no focuses, but determination spent. Okay. And then I think All I right. need to roll another deter or a dice you to do. see if I get that You do back. get to see if you get the, it could be, unfortunately don't get it back, so that's only four successes. So Kijwick, you start nodding off in the middle of the ceremony. And when you wake up, you are not in deep space October anymore. I mean, I know that's what I'm going to put as theater of the mind, but you aren't where you remember being. You look around and you see the white walls of what looks to be a human hospital, uh, perhaps early 20th or maybe early 21st century. And it's at that point that a doctor walks in wearing the name tag that says Dottig on it. And accompanying him are a nurse with Terrell, a nurse that says Jana, and an orderly that uh, is named Stetko. All of them are human. And as you look at yourself, you are not Zaldan anymore. You are, as far as you can tell, human. What's going on here? All right, Mr. Kijwick, is it? Doctor? What's, what's the last thing that you remember? I was performing a ceremony for her. Stetko. Um, Dr. Dartek, this does not appear to be a good situation. Um, oh, this is the Stetko again. Yeah. It's, um, it's right back into the delusions. Yeah. St Stetko, could you please go and fetch the therapist for me, please? Yes. Uh, one moment. <sighs> right. Mr. Kijwick, we've discussed this before. All right. You've had brain trauma. And and sometimes these type of delusions are well an after effect, if you will. But in your case, they've carried on for far too long. You've been here for six months and there's been very little improvement. No, 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 no. I have been commanding Deep Space October 
Oh, the space station again. Listen, we've already checked with NASA. There's never been an astronaut named Kijwick stationed aboard the ISS. There's words coming out of your mouth, doctor, but none of them make sense. <sighs> NASA's a, a memory of something that happened on Earth hundreds of years ago? I, doctor, I want to speak... I... I want to speak to the Zaldan ambassador to the United Federation of Planets. I do not belong here. I think your suggestion of a lobotomy, Doctor, is getting closer and closer to reality here. There will be a lobotomy, and uh, a woman walks through the door. She has short blonde hair. Her name tag says Dr. Jennifer Watney. Ah, uh, Dr. Watney. And she sits on the bed and uh, says, open your eyes for me. Uh, Kiswick will full on hug and embrace the new doctor that has appeared. Please, Mr. Kiswick, oh, we, you talked were here. About, we have talked about this no physical contact with any member of hospital staff. I'm sorry. This is my about this. wife. This is. Um, we have been married for 40 years. Mr. Kiswick, I'm afraid I am just the psychiatrist in this facility this hospital no that's that's not true we met on the uss athene 40 years ago we have fought through life and near death together nice. when my planet was threatened you you left starfleet with me to help in the ecological recovery of Zald. John, are you getting all this down? Um, uh, it's just the same stuff over and again. I mean, it, it's a persistent illusion. It matches precisely with everything we've taken down before. But, Gentlemen, I think he might be feeling a little overwhelmed. Would you mind giving me some time with him? Do you think that's wise? I've got this. As you wish. Right, we'll be right out the door. Thank you. Mr. Kishwick. What's going on? You can call me Dr. Watney. I I know you've been through a lot, and I think right now you're in a season of crisis. And I don't know who you think I am, but I'd like to help you figure it out. There is no figuring needed this is some kind of game or ploy, something Terrell put you all up to. Computer and program. Nothing. You see, you just, I want to mm. help you. But we kind of have to level set here a little bit. And it's going to take a long time to get you back on track, but... I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here for you. Kijwick, it's at this moment that you hear a voice, very faint, but you hear a voice. Stetko, what is your voice saying? I need you to get to ops. And it almost yeah. looks as if what Dr. Watney is saying it too. There it is again. Did did you just hear what you just said? I I need to get out of here. I don't know who you think I am or what you think I've done to be in here, but I need to get out of here. And Kijwick will throw his full bodily weight against the door. And I think it's one of those things where you actually crash through the door and this time you wake up and you are in midbay and surrounding you are Dottig, Nurse Chan, all the orderlies, every single member of Deep Space October's medical staff is currently overseeing you. You look around and see that they have monitors up, they have spare organs ready to go. Everything looks like they're ready to almost completely resurrect you, kind of a thing. 
What's going on? Captain. Doctor. Stetko, you did it. <sighs> did what? You were exposed to a Tarkalian brainworm. It's a very rare parasite that uh, infests the cerebrum and cerebellum. How long? GM. Up to you. Six days. The station, the crew. Present and accounted for. Dr. Watney. You, you mean Jen? My wife. That's the one. <sighs> It's been a hell of a time, Dark. She, she has barely left your side since you've been in here, but I sent her back to your court about an hour and a half ago to get some rest. It was her idea to uh, dose me with psilocybin to get into your head to find you. That, that was you, get to ops. Yes, thank you for I, listening. I never made it to ops though. I in some weird building on Earth back, I guess, when it was nation states. I don't, I don't really remember. Well, what? Datek did all the heavy lifting. So, what's my prognosis, a... Doctor? Uh, stubborn and obstinate. Good. Am I fit to return to duty? Yes. After a day of bed rest and uh, R and R, but I do think that you owe an expl- or uh, you you owe thanks to Torell and Jana. Uh, you collapsed in the meeting about the holographic crew members, and they they got you here just in time. I don't even remember the meeting, but thank you both. Just glad you're all right, Captain. I I think I will retire to my quarters. You did pass out right before we were able to tell you that we were able to recover the entire holographic crew. The new That's... artificial intelligence has been quite helpful, actually. Uh, a little We've too named helpful. it Athena. That's incredible. Are, are they fully recovered? A little disoriented, but it's it's been good. I plan on addressing them just as soon as I can return to duty. Um, I'll I'll have Patea put that on the duty roster. I think Thank they you. need a little bit of rest just as much as you do, sir. They'll understand. Glad you're back, Captain. All right. Kiswick will stand off the bed, test his legs. Six days. It's a long time. I will go to my quarters, doctor, as per your orders. Uh, Jana, grab his other shoulder. And uh, Jara will uh, help. John escort the captain back to his quarters. All right. So, as you guys are traveling through the corridors, uh, of course, with Terrell and John supporting the captain, you sort of look out one of the windows and you see the uh, quantum singularity that leads to fluidic space. But Kiswick, what really stands out to you is not the singularity. But an older gentleman, wearing old earth clothing, white scruffy beard, lined face, seems to be waiting by the window. Hold on a second, lieutenants. That man over there. I filed a report about him when I first came aboard the station. It was weird, to say the least. 
it's a, a little non-specific, but okay. It's as specific as I can get, but this is kind of the name of the game that we're in. Take me over to him. I guess the big question is, do we see him? Oh, yeah. You guys see him. All right. We'll take him over. Sir, I remember you from a few weeks ago. You wouldn't give me your name. Turns, turns around, takes off his hat, puts it to his chest, and says... I've been following your career thus far with great interest. There's something you should know. And that's where we're going to end today's session. <gasps> oh, season cliffhanger! Yup. <laughs> Dag is, Dag's out. <laughs> Dag, Dag is, has rage quitted the stream. He is, uh... <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's come clean about what happened here. So yes, we deliberately set up this entire episode to fuck with Dag because John came up with a great idea that this should all be like an Inception dream kind of thing. So yes, everything that happened was in a dream of Kijwicks. Well, except the episode. you know, except the hologram thing, and except that end scene. Yeah, that yeah that happened. Yeah, it was bookended by real events. Mm-hmm. This is that was that was pretty amazing, you guys. Great job. <laughs> there was there was a, a deliberate behind the scenes coordination here that I was <clears throat> fully surprised by and loved it. Oh, it was it was in real time too. <laughs> so this, much, yeah. this episode was <laughs> was being written as we played. <laughs> so, oh just... my god! <laughs> yeah. Well, that uh, it definitely was great. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, looking up uh, the Klingon wedding story and trying to play along with the dream states, but also coming back from them. This is this is uh, I'm touched and moved. <laughs> Thank you. And it looks no, like but... chat really uh, really enjoyed the episode as well. So thanks everybody yeah, that was, for watching. That's us good. Today. Yeah, yeah. Thanks guys. Now, you know, now I have to decide, do I call this uh, episode uh, What Frills May Come, or do I call it uh, Gaslighting Dag 101? I honestly don't know. <laughs> what Frills May Come. I think that's the winner. I think that's your winner right there. I think that is my winner. All right. So uh, we need to find somebody to raid. Let's find somebody to raid, get the credits rolling, and let Dag calm down a little bit. All right, so let's see. Um, it looks like, uh, you know what? I'm going <sighs> to send you guys over to Choco Jacks. Uh, so just remember that uh, when you guys do go over and raid Choco Jacks to click her profile picture on Twitch twice, that way she gets credit for uh, the view. But uh, thank you all so much for tuning in, and um, I'll see you in two weeks.